box office. Sonic and Bad Boys 3 feet other hits Paramount and Sony needed Sonic the Hedgehog and another $5.05 million on Tuesday, a decline of 58% from its holiday infuse Monday gross, and $2.68 million, minus 47%, on Wednesday. That brings the film's six-day domestic cube to $77.76 million. I'm inclined to think that the James Marsden Jim Carrey movie will be at least somewhat laggy, even if the 3.12x multiplier of Kingsman, $128 million from a $41.5 million Friday morn launch in 2015, is possibly a pipe dream. Sonic is already the seventh biggest video game-based movie ever in unadjusted domestic grosses, now sitting between Mortal Kombat. $70.4 million in 1995 dollar sign 145 million adjusted for inflation, and Pokemon, the first movie, $85.7 million in 1999 dollar sign 154 million adjusted. Meanwhile, Will Smith and Martin Lawrence's Bad Boys for Life is inching closer to $200 million domestic. Sony's Bad Boys for Life has earned around $185 million in North America after actually going up last holiday weekend. The Will Smith Martin Lawrence vehicle is on the path to be a, the first new January release to top $200 million domestic, American Sniper, which earned $350 million, was an Oscar platformer that went wide in early 2015, b, one of the biggest buddy cop actioners of all time in unadjusted grosses and c, one of the biggest R-rated action movies ever in, again, son inflation, unadjusted grosses. Heck, it's currently the year's biggest grossing movie, and it's not 100% certain Sonic the Hedgehog, Onward, A Quiet Place Part 2 or even No Time to Die can top wherever it ends up. Sonic will pass Mutual Strikes Back tomorrow. A halfway decent Friday hold will be enough to put it past Prince of Persia. $90 million in 2010 dollar sign 105 million adjusted. Even a 50% weekend drop $29 million from its $58 million Friday Sun debut, would put it at around $112 million in 10 days, above Rampage, $101 million in 2018, and the Angry Birds movie, $107.5 million in 2016. So Sonic the Hedgehog is going to probably end its second weekend below only Tomb Raider, $131 million in 2001 dollar sign 211 million adjusted, and Pokemon, Detective Pikachu, $144 million in 2019, among all theatrically released video game based movies. So, getting to the top spot is only a matter of time. Once Bad Boys 3 passes $191 million, It'll passes the unadjusted grosses of 22 Jump Street, from 2014, to become the second biggest buddy cop flick ever behind Rush Hour 2, $224 million in 2001. That cum will also make it the second biggest January release ever when adjusted for inflation behind MASH, $71 million in 1970 dollar sign $456 million adjusted. That will also continue to push it higher on the list of, unadjusted, R-rated actioners, behind Terminator 2, Judgment Day, $204 million in 1991, Saving Private Ryan, $216.5 million in 1998, Logan, $226 million in 2017, Beverly Hills Cop, $232 million in 1984, Matrix Reloaded, $279 million in 2003, Deadpool 2, $324 million in 2018, American Sniper, $350 million in 2014 2015, and Deadpool, $363 million in 2016. Even legs like Deadpool, $363 million from a $152 million FR Moon debut in 2016, gets Sonic the Hedgehog to $167 million domestic. That would be past the $155 million adjusted for inflation cumes of Mortal Kombat and Pokemon, the first movie, leaving only Tomb Raider's potentially pie-in-the-sky inflation adjusted domestic figures. Legs like Black Panther gets it to $202 million. That may be unlikely since it's not like there's a Super Smash Bros. movie opening in late April to keep it in the news. If Sonic can survive onward on the 6th of March, then Peter Rabbit 2, the 3rd of April, is a long way off. 
We may have the first $200 million grossing January release and the first $200 million video game movie in early 2020. Both big 2020 hits represent a newfangled star power. Will Smith has faulted, commercially, in non-franchise fare like Concussion, Collateral Beauty and Gemini Man, but has sought to peak commercial heights with Aladdin, $1.053 billion, Suicide Squad, $745 million without China, and now Bad Boys for Life. Like arguably everyone else who isn't Leonardo DiCaprio, Will Smith can't open even moderately budgeted star vehicles anymore. But he's worth his weight in gold in a crowd-pleasing franchise package. Jim Carrey's portrayal of Dr. Robotnik was a key part of Sonic's opening weekend success, offering a throwback manic, and kid-friendly, comic performance that appealed to kids and their nostalgic parents. Again, in a safe sequel, like Dumber and Dumber 2, or appealing stop-loss character package, Carrey has real draw. Will Smith's hit earned $181 million domestic for Sony from a $43 million opening 15 years ago. Jim Carrey's Lie Lie earned $183 million domestic for Universal from a $37 million opening in early 1997. Audiences showed up because they liked the top billed stars and thought the high concepts, a professional matchmaker meets his match, a lawyer can't lie for 24 hours, were intriguing. When we talk about the death of originality, we're usually talking about frankly overbudgeted fantasies like Tomorrowland or Jupiter Ascending, but it also means the pulpy thrillers, vantage point, rules of engagement, and high concept comedies, Wild Hawks, My Best Friend's Wedding, that once brought audiences into theaters. When movie stars were the brand's franchises, Paramount and Sony thrived. The demise, comparatively speaking, of the old-school Star Plus concept studio programmer is what both caused the proverbial death of Hollywood originality and put Sony and Paramount on especially rocky ground. They built their legacy on star vehicles and adult skewing originals, and helped turn the likes of Adam Sandler, Julie Roberts, Jim Carrey, Will Smith and Denzel Washington into a bankable face on the poster movie stars. Once that value went away, Along with audiences shifting to streaming and VOD as a primary entertainment outlet for non-event movies, Paramount and Sony had to try to make IP-specific hits out of what were initially Star Plus concept packages. Walt Disney had the nostalgia-driven franchises and IP, and thus they have maintained an advantage over the last few years. One or two big hits does not make a revolution, although Sony has been on a roll of late with Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, Jumanji. The Next Level, Little Women and Now Little Women. And while Paramount's 2019 was underwhelming, I wish everyone who showed for Sonic also showed up for Dora and the Lost City of Gold, they scored pretty well in 2018 with A Quiet Place, Book Club, Mission, Impossible, Fallout and Bumblebee. The hope is that Paramount can continue this, up, streak, with A Quiet Place Part II, currently projected to open at least as well as its predecessor, the SpongeBob movie. Sponge on the Run and Top Gun Maverick. Sony is hoping Peter Rabbit 2, The Runaway, Ghostbusters, Afterlife, Morbius and Venom 2 can at least perform as well, globally, a Spider-Man, Into the Spider-Verse and Bad Boys for Life, if not Venom in the Jumanji sequels. Paramount and Sony are from the two studios that have suffered the most from the proverbial death of the high-concept star vehicle. They also don't have as much of a footprint in the streaming wars. Viacom has CBS All Access and just announced an eventual all of our brands in one place service, while Sony owns Crackle. Sonic Comparative Heavyweight, for now, like Disney+, Plus, HBO Max or Peacock, Sony and Paramount have more to gain lose from theatrical victories like Bad Boys for Life and Sonic the Hedgehog. Please save the trees and nature, please subscribe my channel thank you.